So hello there thinkers and uh, welcome to a new podcast interview for our We Think Way Circularity Working Group. Um, today we will discuss about uh, the environmental pollution regarding uh, poor fluid filtration of the wastewater, so a topic which is directly linked to our health. Our um, guest comes from Germany, he is the founder and CEO of Ecofario and also he has a PhD in process technology, so he's Definitely the guy you need to talk when <laughs> dealing with water quality or water contamination. So without further introduction, Sebastian, thank you for accepting our invitation and welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sebastian, first of all, I would like to kindly ask you to tell us a few words about uh, yourself and uh, also how you came up with the idea of founding Ecofario and also what motivated you to choose this, this niche? Well, um, as you already stated, my name is Sebastian. I'm a um, paper engineer, actually. So I am a industrial engineer for process technology with a special focus on paper engineering. That's also the like where I did my PhD in. Um, nevertheless, um, during my studies or during my PhD, I came up with the idea to somehow filter microplastics as I read a lot of articles that microplastics are polluting like everything around the globe. So it's not only a few rivers and lakes. Meanwhile, they even find them in, in, in the Arctic or in the Antarctic or in Mongolia or somewhere in the deserts. So they're polluting everything, including our food chain. And um, to be honest, I was not happy with that. Um, and and I did some research on that topic or some research might might be a little bit less so we did a whole lot of research on that topic um, and it showed us that microplastics or many of those microplastics particles that we find in the environment they derive our daily effluence so they find their way into the environment via our wastewater streams so via the connecting links the wastewater treatment plants and well looking at the state of the art it, it is already possible to filter microplastics but in wastewater treatment plants, it's not being done because the state of the art is just a little too expensive and a little bit too complicated and there's no need um, legally and, and, and process-wise. Um, so we came up with the idea to tackle microplastics without actually using a filter. So our technology that we invented is only driven by gravitation and fluid forces. And thus it is a lot cheaper, a lot less prone to, to standard problems connected to to filtering technologies well and that's when we came up with uh, ecofario and then we founded the company in 2018 after already five years of intense research and for now we are um, on the market um, and selling our first plants into the industry so yeah that's where we are Super. So a scientifically based company, basically. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I'm a scientist, but it, it did not it did not emerge the university. So it, it, it really emerged, let's say, our garages and basements. <laughs> Super. OK, Sebastian, let's talk a couple of minutes about uh, the fluid filtration industry. Um, I want to ask you from your perspective, uh, what's the status of this fluid filtration industry in, uh, in Germany and also maybe uh, in the EU, kind of uh, what you see, the main technical, legal, or even institutional challenges, and also opportunities, of course. Well, um, I think we, we need to approach this, this topic from, let's say, two sides. Um, when we are talking about fluid filtration, in general, we're talking about filtration processes, meaning that somehow there is a filter use, a physical filter that is smaller than the particle size that you are tackling that is holding back the particles. And for this, we have like numbers of, of different applications in the industry and in the wastewater treatment plants, um, starting with standard sand filters, cloth filters, then, then microfiltration, nano and ultrafiltration, and so on and so forth, ending up at, at reverse osmosis. But the thing is, everywhere a filter is being used. And we have some processes where filters are just great. And because you want to have a real distinct and defined sharp cutoff of particles, um, and you do not have the problem of like enormous amounts of water or fluids to be treated. Um, and you do not have um, the problem that you don't want to spend too much money. Um, 
but that's some things that we are facing in wastewater treatment plants. Um, usually we have quite a lot of water, talking about 150 to 180 liters per person connected to this wastewater treatment plants if, each day. So that results in, in water flows from a few couple of liters to like a few thousands of liters every second. So we need to treat quite huge amounts of water. And this is very difficult and, and technologically very, um, very uh, complicated to, to, to tackle when you are trying to do that with filter-based units, especially in wastewater streams, because here we have um, like all the biology, which is still in the water, and um, that causes a problem called biofouling. So there's growth on, on the filter media. Um, and we have problems called scaling. So um, we have like mineral de deposition on, on the filter media. And that's something that you only are able to tackle when you flush quite frequently. You need to regenerate your membranes. You need to clean them. Um, so what you need is very big plants that, that need to be recovered quite often. So they, they generate a whole lot of costs for exchanging filters or for renewing filters and so on. Um, and thus, they're very unattractive for wastewater treatment plants. In addition, there's no regulation. So there's no rule, no law in, in Germany or in Europe that says microplastics have to be eliminated in the wastewater treatment plants. They are talking about getting it on the topic. Um, and when I say they, I'm talking about the European Union and, and of course, the, the German federal government. Um, but it's, there is no defined threshold for microplastics. And thus, there's no real driver for wastewater treatment plants to install technologies like ours, which at the moment is, of course, kind of sad, because everyone knows about the problem of microplastics polluting the globe, polluting our food chain, ending up in our in in our bodies, and and causing a real health hazard. But so far, there's no regulation, and that's kind of kind of bad. But if that regulation should come, and for um, wastewater treatment plants that are like forward thinking, that trying to think out of the box. And um, our technology delivers quite a few massive advantages because there is no filter. It's all just pumping water through a passive unit, which we call the high G separator, where we create a whole lot of, 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 um, of G forces and fluid forces that just separates the microplastic particles from, from the water. And, Thus, you are able to clean the water with a lot lower costs, which is a big advantage, of course. Mm -hmm. Super. Yeah. Thank you, Sebastian. Um, maybe can you also tell us a couple of things about your, um, and I quote, hydrocyclone technology and yes. how it works. Yeah. For example, what are the processes involved in the filtration from, uh, uh, from the input to the output? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do so. So um, our technology, which we call the high G technology is based more or less on the hydrocyclone principle. And technical guys or women that now listen to this podcast might say, well, hydrocyclone, that's that's old. Everybody knows about it. And yes, it's true. The first cyclones have been patented more than 100 years ago. Um, but the thing is, a standard cyclone has a so-called open flow body. So you have a cone and the flow is fed into the cyclone tangentially, the flow travels downwards, and due to the angle of the cone, the diameters of the inlets and the outlets, the flow changes direction, travels upwards again. And what happens there is that particles which are specifically more heavy than the carrier fluid, in our case water, they travel to the outer skirts, so onto the wall of the cone, and particles that are specifically lighter, they travel to the center, and here you are able to split between heavy particles and light particles. Um, and that works quite well for several applications, especially if you're tackling sand or if you are tackling styrofoam, for example. So there it works quite well. And then, then there's many established processes where, where you can use these kind of products. But when we look at microplastics, um, microplastics are super small. So we are talking particle sizes, especially in the scope below 100 micron. And they have the other disadvantage, which is their density. So we are 
having densities which go down to maybe 0.8 um, kilograms per liter or 100 kilograms per cubic meter and up to about, let's say, 1400 for very dense poly um, um, ethylene terephthalates, um, so PET bottles. Um, and these particles are very hard to tackle with standard cyclones. So what we did is we, we took the, like the standard principle, but changed the flow dynamics in the inside of, of those cyclones quite significantly. And it was such a significant change that we could patent it um, in a quite densely patented um, area. Um, and what we do is we, we have some kind of guiding element in the cyclone. And this guiding element helps us to make sure that the fluid really travels around that guiding element and that there's no directional changes, which are also very volatile when it comes to different volume loads and different pressures and so on. But with our unit, it really travels five to seven times around this guiding elements until we reach an area where we separate the lighter fraction from the heavier fraction, meaning the microplastics from the cleaned water. Um, and by this slight change, we can generate up to about 150 Gs um, and very defined fluid forces that enable us to tackle microplastics with a cyclone which was not possible before. So we can now enter the market of, of, of microfiltration or filter-based filtration with a unit that does not use a filter. And we reach efficiencies um, at the average of the trials that we did um, at, at about 90% removal rate in a single pass. So um, that's quite nice, we think at least. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Uh, maybe a um, follow-up uh, technical question from our side, Sebastian. Um, so how, um, first of all, how much separation accuracy can your system score? And also, uh, how is it uh, economically, let's say, more efficient than other types of conventional filtration? Maybe. Well, so um, when we look at microplastics, we see that we reach an average separation efficiency of 90% over the particle sizes that we find um, and over the different particle compositions. And um, the good thing is, that we can tackle particles that go up to the density of PET, which usually would not be possible with a standard cyclone because PET, heavier than water, would travel to the outer skirts, while PE or PP would travel to the inner diameters. So you would not be able to tackle both. But in our case, with the fluid forces that we have, we create some kind of Bernoulli effect on each particle, like on an airplane wing, that sucks the particles to the center, even though they are slightly more heavy than water. And thus we get like all the microplastic particles to the center, 90% of all the microplastic particles. So um, the separation efficiency is quite high. Of course, it is not as high as if we used a microfiltration unit that goes down to um, 0.5 microns, because there you have like a distinct cutoff. Um, but at the same time, we are a lot cheaper. So it's it's like weighing between ecological benefit and economical disadvantage, right? And for our units, if we plan for a standard um, a wastewater treatment plant, we can calculate with about 10 to 12 cents per cubic meter cleaned. And of these 10 to 12 cents cubic meter cleaned, the majority is electricity costs because we need pumps. All we need is pumps at about three and a half bars. And this then with, with the units that we install results in about um, those 12 cents ish, including the price um, increase that we had over the last year. Um, and now if you look at wastewater treatment plants, that's something that we are enforcing right now, or trying to enforce right now, um, is usually they have a lot of space. So you could cover this electricity demand by installing comparably low area of photovoltaic and, and energy generation, which is um, yeah, a very low hanging fruit, to be honest. So um, there you could operate the plants net zero with um, considerably low amounts of, of, of PV installed. Definitely. Yeah, super, yeah. Sebastian. 
Um, thank you. I would have uh, one more uh, question for you, and this is more for um, our close network of, of customers. So other than, uh, uh, let's say, micro filtration, uh, what um, industries could also benefit from your technology? And uh, also maybe uh, in which of these possible targeted industries uh, do you see the greatest need to raise awareness on, on these types uh, of solutions that can improve sustainability and environmental protection? So, um, you know, the good thing about a cyclone is it doesn't care what kind of pollutant you feed in it. All it needs is a different density from the carrier fluid. So what we need is a two-phase mixture or more or less a heterogeneous mixture because you could also separate oil from water. Um, and you need a density difference between those particles and or the carrier fluid and the particles. And as soon as you have that, you can reach high separation or removal efficiencies with our cyclones. And this helps us to have possible applications or potential applications in numerous um, um, industrial um, uh, branches. First one where we are already um, actively um, busy at is, is the paper industry, pulp and paper industry. And here it is um, separation of good fibers from bad fibers. So you, or what we do is we, we um, decrease fiber losses and increase um, uh, raw material utilization. Of course, you also decrease um, cost for waste disposal. Um, we can also separate, for example, um, waxes from fluids. We can separate plastic particles from fluids, which will give better product qualities to, to the paper and board products. So this is an industry. Then we are also looking um, at soil purification. Um, we had some trials running in Denmark, which were very successful, where we showed that we could separate quite nicely oil or diesel from contaminated soil, um, which is quite a big benefit. Then we are looking into the automotive industry where it can be used to clean wash waters from paint shops and, and clean out um, ink particles or for example, waxes and so on. Um, we are now looking into the fields of oil production. So um, oil that is being withdrawn from the ground is usually contaminated with water. And to have pure oil, you need to remove this water. And this water is then removed and put back into the, into the environment or back into the ground. Um, of course, not spilled in the sea, whatever. Um, but with our technology, you could improve this oil to water ratio and thus cl have cleaner water, which is being fed back into the, into the ground and have purer oil, which is also um, a benefit. Of course, now you might say, well, oil, petrochemical, that's not too environmentally friendly. Um, well, there will be no business and no industry um, without oil in the next, let's say, at least 50 years. So we need oil. And as, if we can make this process a little bit more environmentally friendly, we are exactly where we want to be. Then one big project, which we are um, also uh, busy at, is... Um, um, pre-purification of seawater for desalination plants because there you have those micro or ultra filtration units followed by reverse osmosis or osmosis or evaporation and if we pre-clean with our units we could um, enhance the filtration times of the following up filter-based technology so also create less waste and so on so there's like a whole lot of possible applications if you have a contaminant which you need to get out of a carrier fluid, we might be the guys to help you with that. Yeah, great, super. That's all for today, uh, Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much for uh, for setting aside some time to be our guest today. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to having you in our future activities and uh, keep in touch. Yes, perfect. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having us. It was our pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye.